Hello friends, Bolt Matrix here, and today I'm going to show you the dead easy way to get Linux up and running on your system. Now, why Linux? Why would you ever want to run Linux? Well, do you have an Android phone? That runs Linux. Do you have a Chromebook? That runs Linux. Do you have a Wi-Fi router in your home? They all run Linux. In fact, every single mobile app works running off Linux. Every web server almost every web server in the world runs on Linux. Linux is everywhere. And it's important for us as fans of technology to at least experience it a little bit. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that on a Windows machine. Most of the folks have Windows, so that's what we're going to do. Now all of these directions, well most of these directions, can be done on a Mac as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now if my screen looks a little blurry that's simply because I am running on a 2560 by 1440 screen. I'm capturing my screen using OBS, and OBS really doesn't like to capture on a screen at that resolution, so I had to drop my resolution down to 10, 1920 by 1080, or 1080p. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and get something called VirtualBox. And this is going to allow us to run a virtual machine on our Windows system. So I'll just download VirtualBox. And the next thing we're going to do is download a distribution of Linux. And I have chosen to show you folks how to download and install Ubuntu. Now Ubuntu is one of the more popular distributions of Linux. There are other ones. There are There is Linux Mint. There is Linux... Kubuntu. There are different versions of Ubuntu out there, and I'm going to download it using a torrent. Now, the reason I do a torrent is because it just downloads so much faster this way. So get the torrent up and running and let that finish downloading. Meanwhile, while that's down, oh, dude, there, it downloaded already. Now, if I downloaded the ISO or the ISO file straight from Ubuntu, it would have taken a lot longer. Just It just would have. So we're going to go ahead and go into my downloads folder. And I got a lot of junk in here. So first we're going to install VirtualBox. Click Next. Accept all the defaults and click Next. Allow it to create all the stuff and click Next. Click Yes. Install. Accept the pop-up that Windows gives you. And I like to do this. I like to install the driver software just to be on the safe side. Great. We've already installed it. Now, I am on a very, very powerful, fast machine. My laptop, or my laptop, my desktop has a, an AMD processor with eight cores, 32 gigs of RAM, and a lot of hard drive space. So I'm fine when it comes to resources. But we're going to walk through a minimal install of Ubuntu. So we're going to click on New once or in Oracle's uh, VM VirtualBox Manager. We're going to name it Ubuntu. Now you can name it whatever you want. It has already chosen Linux, and I'm going to choose Ubuntu 64-bit if I can find it here in the list. Oh, come on. Where are you? Linux 64 should be in here somewhere. Now, what that is saying, 64 versus 32-bit, that's the instruction set for the processor. I am currently using a 64-bit processor. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the advanced and just see if I can find Linux 64-bit. Well, okay. Doesn't look like it wants to do 64-bit. Oh, well. So we'll click Next. We'll give it memory, we'll give it 4 gigs of RAM, so that's 4 times 1024, 4096. And that's in megabytes, not gigabytes. So there are 1024 megabytes in a gigabyte, so I'm giving it 4 gigabytes of RAM or memory. We're going to create a virtual hard disk. We're going to use, mm, we'll go ahead and use v, VDI, that's fine. I'm going to choose a fixed size. That means that that means the hard drive size that you choose, it can't go any higher than that. And then we're going to give it 50 gigs. Create. 
Now this is creating the actual virtual machine and this screen and this taskbar that's filling up is actually allocating the hardware on my machine for our virtual machine. That's all it's doing here. And this is the same process that you would follow on a Mac. Now, if you're already using Linux, you can do the same thing here. This doesn't work on Chromebooks, unfortunately, or I have not been able to get it to work on a Chromebook. And I've got a couple at work that we hand out as loaner machines. And Chromebooks are fantastic for fellow employees who have forgot their laptops at home. This is actually going a little slower than I initially thought it was going to go. Eh, oh well. Nothing. <laughs> We're not doing rocket science here, and yeah. <laughs> I really thought this would be done by now. I'm an impatient man. Finish. All right, there we go. Great. So we've gotten our Ubuntu virtual machine. Now we need to do one thing before we turn it on. We click on settings, highlight the virtual machine, and click on settings or right click and choose settings. And then we find the storage. And you see the controller here shows that the disk is empty. We want to choose a live CD. And then we want to click on this little disk icon here. Now, for those of you that are younger, all software came on disks back in the day. DVDs, CDs, or little tiny floppy disks. So we're going to choose our disk, go into our downloads folder, and find the Ubuntu ISO, which is right there. Click open, OK, and then start the virtual machine. OK, I would bet the reason that this failed is because the virtual machine and the software here is running in 32-bit mode, while the ISO we did is in 64-bit mode. So give me a few minutes. We'll come right back. I'll do this off camera, and we'll figure out what went wrong. So folks, I made a very, very simple mistake. All computers, when they are shipped to you, have virtualization turned off by default. And that's a security feature. So the one thing we need to do is actually go into our computer's BIOS, or in this case, my computer's BIOS, and turn on the ability to run a virtual machine. Now, the one thing that I absolutely hate about this computer is the time it takes to boot up. So, eh, oh well. So I'm using my camera here to record what I'm doing. I'm running an AMD system at this time, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the BIOS, hopefully and turn on what is effectively the ability to run a virtual machine. And the only issue is I can never remember where the devil the settings for this kind of stuff is. Uh, it could be in advanced, it could be in tools, and it's called something different on AMD versus Intel. Intel, it's normally called Intel Virtual Machine Ability or management. This on AMD, um, I'm going to have to poke around for a bit. Okay, so it is called AMD SVM for something virtual machine. <laughs> so we're going to go into see that and then SVM mode. We're going to enable it. And this is something virtual machine. We'll go to exit. All right, well, maybe not. We'll go to that, and then we'll go to exit, save changes and exit, and it'll reboot. And then we'll come back and try it again. All right, friends, we are back in Windows, and we're going to try this again. So we're going to launch Oracle VM VirtualBox, and then we're going to click on New, name it Ubuntu. Aha, see, that was the problem right there. Ubuntu, 64-bit now. That is exactly what we wanted to see. Next, I'm going to go 4096 for the RAM, create a hard disk, leave it at VDI, then uh, we'll go with fixed size again, we'll make it 50 gigs, and then we'll fast forward through this.
All right, now that that's done, we'll go ahead and click Settings, go over to Storage, click on Empty, and then click on the little ISO, on the little disk, choose our ISO, and then hit OK. And let's launch this sucker. Oh, one thing we want to check first. Let's see, is there anything in here that is... Okay, good. This is what I was looking for, the boot order. So we're going to boot from turn off floppy, optical disk, or hard disk. In this case, we want the optical disk to be first. So, okay. Start. And wait for it. Ha-ha! There we go. This is one issue I have with Ubuntu is that in a virtual machine, it always starts off small like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this is pretty much just saying that the guest operating system is going to capture my mouse. So yep, yeah, it's gonna be a little small. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here on the frame. And it's also a, an odd resolution. It's, I believe, 800 by 600. Now, if it seems slow, that's because it kind of is. It's only using one core, and it's only using four gigs of RAM. And here we are at the Ubuntu installer. Now, the Ubuntu in... Well, let's go back to... Come back. Okay. The Ubuntu installer is looks like this, so we're going to install. Maybe. Uh-oh. I think I might have broke it. I can't even move the screen anymore. Unfortunately, that does happen sometimes with VMs. So we'll go ahead and send power off the machine. And I'm going to go in and give it just a little bit more power. So base memory is that. Let's go ahead and give it four CPUs. Keep it at four gigs of RAM and start it again. That seems to make it be making it a little bit happier. All right, there we go. That definitely seems to have helped a little bit. So what I did was I went from using one processor core and I upped it to four processor cores. And that just made it happier. So we'll go ahead and install Ubuntu. Leave it at English in the US, because that's where I am. We're going to do the normal installation and download third-party software. And we're going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. And this is just erasing the disk of the virtual machine, not my computer's disk. We're going to choose the Eastern Standard Time because that's where I am. Your name is, we'll choose, we'll choose Slag. The computer's name will be Dinobot. And the password will just be something random that I know how to type fast. And we're off to the races. So I'm going to go ahead and let this install. You're going to see this move a little bit faster than normal. And we'll come back. We are here at Ubuntu, and we're going to log in. Welcome to Ubuntu. Welcome to Linux. Now, as I said, there are a ton of different other distributions or versions of Linux out there, but they all have the underlying same guts, we'll say. This is Ubuntu. This is actually one of my preferred Linux distributions. This is Ubuntu 18.04. It was released this past April and has seen a couple of updates. The first thing that you're going to notice is this is not Windows. <laughs> this is not Mac. Actually, it's a little bit more like a Mac than Windows is, or than like Windows, sorry. Over here on the left, you have your bar. 
where you can put all your items, all your programs that you use regularly, and you can even customize this bar. You can have it auto hide. You can have it on the left or on the right or on the bottom. I normally prefer to have it on the bottom, but this is the fresh vanilla install. This is also the desktop operating or desktop environment called GNOME, G-N-O-M-E. And it's, it's different than a lot of other things. Oh yeah, forgot here are uh, different workspaces as well. To access a program, you could click down here or click on the Windows key or the super key as they call it and launch say Firefox or you just have it over here on the bar. Up here in the top, this is called the activities bar. We have, this will also launch the search. This is the date, obviously, and, we, and by default, most Linux use military time here in the US. Then we have our network connections, our volume, and our power. And then if I click on the little arrow here, we have our volume, wired connection, our user who is currently logged in, settings, lock the screen, or power off the machine. So the first thing we're going to do is update. And I just like to type in the word soft, and that gives me software update. We'll let this launch, check for updates. And you can also do this from the terminal. And to launch the terminal, you just click on there, type terminal, and there's the terminal. So we'll go ahead and let these install. They'll install a lot faster for you than they will for me. Now, did you see how fast those installed? We're going to go ahead and restart. This is in a virtual machine. Now, imagine if this was on dedicated hardware. You install the updates. The updates would install faster than it does in a virtual machine, and you reboot. And that's it. That's 10 times faster than anything Windows or Mac can do in terms of updates. All right, and we're back in our virtual machine. My son is going back upstairs now. Stomp, 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 stomp. Okay, so you want to install software. Well, there are a couple of ways to do that. You could do it through the command line or the terminal, or you could go over here to the Ubuntu Software Center. And this is where a lot of the software is. One of the things that I like to install on all machines, on all my machines, is Krita. This. This is what I use to make all of my icons. You can install this from the terminal as well. It'll probably actually go a little faster if you do it that way, but this works fine. It's downloading and it'll be done here in a moment. And you can minimize that and continue working on other things. So like I never use Thunderbird, so I'm just gonna remove it. I never use Rhythmbox or LibreOffice or Amazon or help. So you just right click and remove them. But I do like to play Mahjong, so drag it over. Ah, come back here. Add to favorites. Or you could just drag and drop. And I'll also use Rem Rem Remmina. Remmina. This is a ver this is what you can use for remote desktop. I use that at work all the time. Transmission I use all the time. Oh, and I seem to be missing VLC. So we'll go ahead and get VLC installed, and I'll do it from the terminal this time. So sudo to give us permission to actually install. apt get install. So what we've done here is sudo is to elevate permissions so that we can install software. Apt get tells us that we're going to be getting the software from a specific network repository. Install means install, and then VLC dash Y means to just install it after I put my password in and not ask me yes or no. And this is one of the other ways to install software. 
and we're done that was it didn't have to download anything vlc wise and we should see vlc it's right there all ready to go so i just wanted to show everybody how to install ubuntu or any linux distribution into a virtual machine very quickly as you saw we did run into some problems and that's part of computing yes computers are a lot simpler today than they used to be but you're always going to run into a little bit of an issue no matter what you're working with with it whether it's windows mac or linux that's where google and being able to find your own solutions comes into play don't panic if you run into a problem start searching on the internet take a deep breath and think about the problem so my original assumption with virtualbox was wrong the version of virtualbox i was using wasn't the problem it was actually the motherboard didn't have something set in it correctly or the bios i should say so that just was a two minute google <laughs> not even a two minute a 30 second google search and i found my answer and i showed you guys how to fix it that is the essence of what being or working with technology is a whole lot of googling and a whole lot of understanding about how some of this stuff works now the reason i'm showing you linux is as i said in the beginning everything runs linux every web almost every web server all these internet of iot devices or internet of things devices websites routers your phone your refrigerator if you have a smart fridge kvms computers everything runs linux except us in the desktop world funny that's really weird if you start to think about it everything run linux, runs linux except what we use day to day to do the bulk of our work that's really strange we should probably change that because then once we understand how our you know day-to-day -day stuff works we'll start to understand how everything else is interconnected and that's important so folks let me know if you want to see me do more linux stuff I like Linux. I'm currently running it on one of my desktops as a daily driver. I like it. I think it's fun. It's something different. It's not perfect. No operating system is. But I could do just about everything I need to on Linux. As always, let me know what you think down in the comments. Hit that like and subscribe button. And be sure, and be sure to hit the bell so you know when a new video is out. I'm Bolt Matrix. Thank you for watching this Wacky Wednesdays video. And I'll catch you next time.